What time was he crucified? Now we're going to go into meat. What time was he crucified? I've discussed these points in previous sessions, but we're creature repetition. We need to hear something repetitively until it becomes second nature. Let's see the time he was crucified. Guys, please, let's go in depth. You're going to be blown. I promise you, you're going to be blown away. Here it is. This is what time he was crucified. Mark 15, 25. Mark 15, 25. He was crucified third hour, 9 a.m. Third hour, 9 a.m. Now, why is that significant? If you're listening, I want you to remember third hour, ninth hour, third hour, 9 a.m., ninth hour, 3 p.m. Can you guys remember that? At the time of our Lord, the Jews would observe the morning and evening sacrifices. Morning and evening sacrifices, because according to Numbers 28, write this down. I'm not going to quote it. Numbers 28, verses 3 to 8. God commanded that the priests would offer the morning and evening sacrifices in the tabernacle, later in Jerusalem, in the temple in Jerusalem. And the morning sacrifice and the evening sacrifice at the time of Jesus took place at 9 in the morning, 3 p.m. in the afternoon. The priests would offer sacrifices. And the Jews would go up and pray, and incense would be offered as well. Now notice, Mark 15, 25, Jesus is crucified at 9 a.m., the third hour. And it's, it states that at that time, as he's nailed, at the time of the morning sacrifice, and at the time of the morning prayer, when the Jews would go to the temple and pray at 9 a.m., morning sacrifice as the priests were offering the sacrifice. Luke 23, 34, Jesus prays as he's hanging on the cross as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world because he's our high priest offering his human soul, his human life as a burnt offering, sin offering, guilt offering, wave offering for our sins. Did you get the first point? The first point? Jesus crucified, third hour, 9 a.m. Time of the morning prayer and sacrifice. This was the time the Jews would go to the temple and pray as the priest offer a sacrifice. Here is the Lamb of God, John 1, 29, 136, 1 Peter 1, 18, 19 who offers himself as an unblemished sacrifice, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, 1 Peter 2, 21 to 25, specifically 22 to 24, Hebrews 9, 14, for our sins, and he's also our high priest in the order of Melchizedek, Psalm 110, verse 4, Hebrews 5, verse 6, Hebrews 7, verses 1, all the way to 15. So Jesus, the high priest, offers up a sacrifice at the morning hour, a prayer and sacrifice, and he prays as he offers up a sacrifice for the forgiveness of the sins of the people he dies for. We caught that first point? Okay. That's Numbers 28, verses 3 to 8. In fact, did you wonder why in Acts 2, in Acts 2, that's Numbers 28, 3 to 8, the Holy Spirit filled the apostles in the third hour. Here's Acts 2, 14 and 15. Acts 2, 14 and 15. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and hear my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. Now, do you wonder why? The Holy Spirit filled them. Do you wonder why the Holy Spirit filled the apostles at the third hour, nine in the morning, when they were by the temple? Because this is when the largest group of Jews would have been gathered because the Jews would have been there at the third hour, nine in the morning, 
at the temple to observe the morning prayer and the morning sacrifice. So what better time than at the third hour, 9 a.m., at the temple where thousands would have been gathered for the morning sacrifice, morning prayer, for the disciples and the apostles to be filled with the Holy Spirit and then speak in the various languages of the Jews represented there miraculously by the power of the Holy Spirit, glorifying God in these different dialects as a miraculous sign. Jesus is Lord. He is risen. And these are his servants on earth. Everyone got it? In Acts 2, 14 and 15. Is it a coincidence our Lord is crucified 9 a.m. third hour and he prays for the sinners who are nailing him to be forgiven? And is it a coincidence that the Holy Spirit fills the apostles third hour, 9 a.m. at the time of the morning sacrifice and prayer when there'll be a great number of Jews represented? Or do you see that God is deliberately designing events to point to the fulfillment of in Jesus Christ, our Lord, because Christ is our high priest who offers his human life as a sacrifice. And that's why he's nailed at the ninth, 9 a.m., third hour. Holy Spirit, save me from error and make my voice pleasing to the ears of your servants. Rebuke Satan and perfect us for the glory of Jesus Christ. Third hour, 9 a.m., he prays at the time of the morning sacrifice, morning prayer, because he's hanging as our sacrifice and as the priest who offers his sacrifice for our sins. We got it? If that's good, I can move on to the second saying. You finally got it, Hope, my friend? Hope, Numbers 28, 3 to 8. Morning sacrifice, which at the time of Christ was 9 a.m., third hour. Priests offer sacrifices and the people would pray with the priests. Jesus crucified, Mark 15, 25. Third hour, 9 a.m. Hope, what are you not getting? And then... When he's crucified, Luke 23, 33, 34, he prays, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. The high priest offering sacrifice for atonement for the sins of people, particularly these Romans who didn't know what they were doing so they could be forgiven. Now, remember the other hour of prayer. Ninth hour, 3 p.m. Ninth hour, 3 p.m. That was the time of the evening sacrifice and evening prayer. Pay attention now. In fact, let me jump to that right now because I know you guys are excited. Ninth hour, 3 p.m., time of the evening sacrifice, evening prayer. Let me prove it to you. Okay, let me, let me get there. Okay, because I know you guys are excited and you're like, what? Come on, man. Here it is. Watch here. Now, Hope, I want you to pay attention. This is what they didn't teach you in seminary. Acts 3.1. Acts 3.1. What time did Peter and John go up to the temple to pray? Now, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, which is 3 p.m. That's why NIV, NIV will say 3 p.m. Why are they going up at the ninth hour? Because that's the time of the evening sacrifice and prayer. Cornelius, the first Gentile convert to Christianity, he had a vision when an angel came to him. Now, Greece, 1978, Kiri Leisun, Ortho Chris, all of you. Watch. What time, what time did the angel appear to Cornelius in a vision? Acts 10, verses 1 to 3. Acts 10, verses 1 to 3. Acts 10, verses 1 to 3. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment, a devout man. Now, remember, he's a Gentile. Now, let me explain what this means, that a Gentile could be a devout man. And one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always about the ninth hour. So wait, Cornelius, a Gentile who's a God-fearer, who gave alms and prayed often? At the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, did you catch it? Ninth hour, angel appears to him in a vision. This God-fearing Gentile, which means that he was no longer a pagan, he gave up idolatry, he no longer worshipped the gods and goddesses of the Greeks, but now was convinced that the God of Israel is a true God, 
and was following the Jewish customs and practice of worshiping the God of Israel. And God honored his zeal, his charity and prayers, and sent him an angel to bring him to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what hour did he see the angel? Ninth hour, 3 p.m. Why that hour? Because he explains to Peter, Acts 10.30. Why that hour? Acts 10.30. Look at here. He explains it. Acts 10 verse 30. So Cornelius said to Peter, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. He was observing Jewish practices because he had abandoned the paganism, idolatry of the Greeks and the Romans and became a God-fearing Gentile, worshiping the God of Israel. He started observing the morning hour of prayer and the evening hour of prayer and started obeying the laws of Moses. And because of that, God honored him. So do you see proof from the scriptures? Ninth hour, 3 p.m., time of evening prayer and sacrifice. Now, why am I mentioning it? I'm going to just mention it now, but later I'll elaborate on it. I don't have time to do it now. But I'm going to show you. Matthew 27, 46. Let's see who's going to make the connection. And I'll elaborate on it a little later. But I'm giving you the evidence right now. Okay, Matthew 27, 46. Let's see who catches this. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At the ninth hour, Jesus prays again, quoting Psalm 22. Is it a coincidence? Jesus prays at the third hour and the ninth hour. The time of the morning and evening sacrifices and prayers. And is it a coincidence when he's crucified at the third hour, 9 a.m.? He is the high priest offering himself as the Lamb of God for atonement for our sins. And then he again prays at the time of the evening sacrifice and prayer. Everyone got it? So you see how everything's pointing to Jesus? Hey, thank you for confirming that. Look what he said. That is awesome. This is Brad, by the way. You are right. They never taught us that in seminary. One of my seminary friends and I think we were totally undertrained. You better believe it. So here's a confession by a brother in Christ who went to a conservative seminary, got robbed because he didn't get his money's worth. Do you see that, guys? Seminary is cemetery. See that? 